Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 65. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. Hi, Daniel. How are you? I've been better, but this has been a good day. I've heard that you've been doing some filmmaking? Uh, yes, I have. How did that go? Well, just like any other shooting day, long day, come back home tired and pretty much hit the bed, but I had this to do, so yeah, I'm here. I heard something about lightsabers? What's that all about? Well, basically, you know how much of a YOLO I am, so let that speak itself. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll leave it at that. So, Fluorescent tubes, think about it. Oh, God, no. So, moving to our guest for this week, we have the one and only Pixel Kitties. Hello, hello, thank you for having me, or I'm, I'm going to try to say this, Salamat Pagi, is that good morning? <laughs> awesome! Yes, that's awesome. Um, how did you know that? Uh, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Google for the win! By any chance have you been to Malaysia before? Uh, no, I have not, unfortunately. But uh, but yeah, I found a Google site that not only had the word, but it, a native speaker read it, so I knew how to pronounce it. So. Awesome. awesome! 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 Yay, this is the first! Yay! Oh, really? <laughs> yep. Even our local guests have never done that to us. <laughs> well, uh, Yay! Well, this is the first! Well, I'm sure the MBS Show Awards are going to do something about it. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Even though I'm sure it's not actually morning where you are. so that's probably <laughs> You know, it, it's a podcast. It's a podcast. People can just play it in the morning. And <laughs> yeah, people could be listening in the morning, so you can still apply. Yay. So anyway, Pixel, how are you? How are you? I am very, very good. Thank you for having me. This is, this is really exciting. I love you guys. Oh, thank you. That, that's very kind of you. Well, we go but way back, all the way to the Bronyville show, when I, I read your letter oh, so many yeah. moons ago. Oh, those were the early days, my ambitious days of getting Tara Strong on the show, getting all <laughs> those popular bronies on, and you were one of them. I, I, I remember sending you a DeviantArt message or DeviantArt note and hoping you read it, but no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I get so many comments and things on the DeviantArt site, I find it very hard to reply to all of them. I wish I could, but that would be like a full-time job. So <laughs> I'm sure I read it, I and I'm sure I intended to respond, and then like something shiny went past, and uh, I completely lost uh, it. It's cool, so. it's cool. I think back then we were not ready for it. Now, well, after 65 episodes, if we're not ready, I don't know what to say. 65 episodes is impressive. That's... There are plenty of podcasts that came up and didn't even make it to 10 episodes. So 65 is impressive. Oh, really? I've never heard of any of them that died before 10. Oh, um, there's a <laughs> few. That's why. <laughs> there are a few, yeah. Especially from the early days, you know, when, when there weren't that many podcasts, but everyone was kind of getting into ponies. I was subscribing to everyone I could find on iTunes or whatever. And there were a few that I get three, four episodes in, and I think, boy, this show's terrible. And then they'd, of course, be gone thereafter. So. Yeah. I, I'm guessing the formula didn't gel because, well, one thing or another. Uh, I think the biggest problem was always professionalism. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you guys are doing really well and what, say, Bronyville does is you sound like a professional uh, radio or podcasting program. The ones that I think didn't survive were usually seven friends on the same oh. microphone being kind of intelligible and... <laughs> And laughing and making <laughs> in jokes that only they understand. No one really wants to listen to that. So, well, I think you can have inside jokes if you're what 100 or above or 50 well, or more. If you're established, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was our episode zero. <laughs> Basically, that's what happened. <laughs> oh god, last no. run. <laughs> uh, so everybody starts somewhere. True, yep, true. Definitely. And talking about starting, before we start the show, we have to ask you the four important questions, Pixels. So, oh, question yes. number one is: Who's your favorite character? My love is the most great and powerful love at all. I love Trixie. She is my favorite character and has been since Ghostbusters. Oh my. Um, any reason why Trixie? Because we, I don't think we had a Trixie answer before. We had so many Trixies. Really? <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember who the last one that said Trixie. I think it was uh, David, was it? I don't remember. 
But I know that there are so many Trixies out there. And for the first time, we've actually got an answer just straight up like that. Because the past few episodes, everybody's like, oh man, how could you ask me this? <laughs> yeah, I've been, I mean, I've been solid Trixie ever since I first saw her. And people ask me, why do you like this character? She's kind of terrible, right? But uh, I love her color scheme. I love the blue and the light blue and light blue and white. I, I think she's a really pretty looking character. I love the voice. Yeah, I love the bombastic, over-the-top, scene-chewing performance that, uh, that that she has. And I don't know. I love the idea that there's another uh, unicorn whose specialty is magic, who's not Twilight, who's completely different. And I just think she's so much fun. Okay, that's a good answer. Um, you, you should hear the Japanese dub because um, the Japanese dub, they made her sound really interesting. I have not heard it yet. I keep meaning to uh, to listen to that because I've heard it's very, very entertaining. It is, it the is. Japanese put very good voice actors on that show. I'm sure. I have no doubt about that. I, I think somebody said it. Um, I think Osaka Jack said on his Twitter feed that he couldn't believe that they added a line to Trixie when she ran away. Oh, really? Did Do you know oh. what the line is? Um, I'll remember this. Then he'll type something in Japanese out for no, us no, that I, we will never understand. No, I think the line is, I'll remember this. It's like... <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see. Oh, well, I guess they have the perspective of knowing there's another episode with her coming down the road. So they mm. sort of throw that in there as foreshadowing that, that they might not have had in season one. So True, it's kind of it, interesting. It's kind I'll of the Japanese Sundari thing. Yes, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the Japanese Sundari thing where... Oh, uh, I will get my revenge, blah, 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 kind of deal. This was a grave insult, and I will remember it and find my vengeance upon you. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, with that in mind, oh, that's interesting. Oh, uh, season oh, three will be... going to be the basis of her entire existence. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a few people that analyzed the Postbusters episode saying, oh, how did um, Trixie know Twilight by name? Oh, there's no, there's no way. Blah 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 blah. I don't remember how what people said about the Great Powerful Trixie. But if I remember right, Lauren Faust said that Trixie was from the school of gifted unicorns. Yes, she said that Trixie was from the same school as Twilight, and weirdly enough, she intended Trixie to be a male pony ah. originally. Oh, and the name? At some point, and they didn't change any of the writing at all. I don't think they just. You know, change the voice actress and the way the character looked, and voila. Man, that guy would be a jerk. Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? I don't think pe- it would be a Prince Blue Blood situation if, yeah, if Trixie was guys. a male. Yeah, but as a female, she's, I don't know, she's more appealing. It's weird. I don't know. I think i think if Trixie was a male, what was the name? I don't remember the original name for the Trixie character guy. I don't know. Yeah, but to me, the way I look at it is if Trixie was a male character, it'll be really interesting because bombastic show pony on stage, doing this, doing that, and then little Twilight there, and then like the fanfics, go. <laughs> we we sort of get that though, don't we? We get Iron Will, who's has got this strong on stage, aggressive male personality. We get the Flim Flam Brothers, who are sort of the song and dance thing. So I, I guess that is a reoccurring theme with, with the male characters. Yeah, the the villain, villainous male characters, at the least. The villainous male characters, yes. Yeah. Well, we, we still need a TARDIS episode with the Doctor, but hey. Yes, we do. We'll, we'll the, probably the, still be waiting for that at the end of Season 4, but <laughs> it, we all want it. Oh, that's between BBC and Hasbro. <laughs> now, Zachary Rich, where are you? <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, what's your favorite episode? I'm sure this will come as a shock to you after our previous conversation, but uh, Magic Duel is my favorite episode now. Ooh. Wow. Um, <laughs> um, stupid question to ask, but why? <laughs> well, not, not only because of Trixie, although that's the, the completely obvious reason, but I just, of, of all of the episodes in season three, I think it was the most, it, it felt the most like a season one episode. It felt like it had this introduction of thing conflict resolution in a way that I don't think a lot of the other the other episodes this season really did well. Hmm. Um, I thought the animation was beautiful. Like the, the back alley scene where Trixie gets the gets the Alicorn amulet, the the rainy 
know, windswept back street just looked so great. Podyville turned into Trixieville, looked so <laughs> awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm really impressed that uh, that M.A. Larson, who wrote it, was able to take all these, at this point, all these bad interpretations of Trixie. You know, she's good, she's reformed, she's still evil, she's even worse. <laughs> and, and he threw them kind of all together and made it work somehow. We, we got all the fan versions of Trixie, and I don't think anyone came away disappointed that their headcanon was ruined forever. So, I, I think this very is, impressive. I think there's a few people who were kind of, oh, no, you ruined Trixie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but there's a few people <laughs> who find fault. Now, now you see that the true power of the Alicorn Amulet. <laughs> yes, no, uh, no, but, it gave him the ability to impress almost everyone. No, but <laughs> still, there's, there's a few, like, how did, how did Trixie know of... Twilight Sparkle by name and fully like that. <laughs> no, well, I mean, and we also know Tricky Trixie was at least somewhere around Ponyville in the intervening time because she was mentioned by the uh, in the Gabby Gums article. Oh, yeah. yep. So, so she she was probably in close enough proximity to hear who this purple alicorn skilled in magic who bested her what what that name was. So. Y- you mean purple unicorn? <laughs> Oh yeah, that thing. <laughs> unicorn, yes. Yeah, the alicorn thing. Like if um, Trixie knew Sorry. that Twilight was an alicorn, oh, no, flip table, I'm out. Not alicorn. We don't want to mention that. <laughs> oh boy, this is so she reads the newspaper and goes, like, "Now the school newspaper has beef on me." Ponytail's going down. <laughs> exactly. That was the last straw, right? Yeah. Uh, I I like that episode too, just because of the whole um, Twilight doing her aging spell magic trick thing. And the whole uh, line where Twilight says, now I'm going to make a mare into a stallion. Like, mm-hmm. all of the fan... <laughs> the, what, what was the what's the rule? Rule 63. Rule 63 yeah. is canon. Oh my yeah, God. like, oh! <laughs> and at the yeah, end of the I mean, MLS, I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but it was such a great trick. I mean, the, the, it was so cool just how she pulled that off and... It was just good. I love that episode. Yeah, I, I, love, I love it for that too because, wow, was it creative. So, on my third question, how did you become a fan of the show? Oh, goodness sakes. That was like 30 years ago now, wasn't it? How, how long was that now? I guess it was only uh, three years ago. Two years oh, ago, that three long. years ago, something like that. that. I guess, yeah, it's hard to keep perspective on it. It seems like forever, <laughs> but... I know it was uh, it was around the time where the game Dragon Age 2 was coming out because I was on the Bioware forums a lot at that time because I was greatly anticipating this game before it came out. And uh, I was you know, doing a lot of posting there and talking to people and I was in some groups. And it seemed like overnight everybody's personal avatar changed to a picture of this cat deer looking thing <laughs> i wasn't sure what they were and then they're like oh it's my little pony well but nothing like the my little pony i grew up with and uh so i wanted to be one of the cool kids right so so i changed my avatar to gen one firefly who was always my favorite character well and they're like no no you don't get it that, that's not what this is and people very helpfully pointed me in the direction of some of the youtube videos for friendship is magic and, uh, like, one episode, two episodes in, I was hooked. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun and smart and silly, but also, like, pegs on all those little kid parts of my brains that just want something fun and cute. And it all came together. And I would say within days, I had gone out and bought all the pony stuff I could get my hands on. And I was starting to haunt the, the various pony forums and things like that. So it, it didn't take much. It take, took a bunch of people on the internet <laughs> bombing me with pony pics. But, but that did it. And the rest, I guess, is, is history. Oh, okay. Well, Dragonish 2 was kind of meh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the funny thing. Of, of everything that came from that period in my life, you know, I thought Dragon Age 2 was going to be the cool thing. No, it was it was ponies. Dragon Age 2 was was kind of a disaster. But, but yeah. hey, I have no regrets. Ponies, yay. True, true. Well, we, we all love our bad games here and there, but uh, I think something good came out of it. You found the love of ponies. 
Absolutely, exactly. So, my last question for you is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? It's been interesting. At first, like with my husband, when I told, started trying to tell him about the show, he was completely confused as to why I suddenly cared about My Little Pony after, you know, how many years of, since I was five or six years old. And uh, But I showed him, and he thought, well, this, this is bad. I, I can see why you're into this. Um, and once I started doing art and things like that, of course, I, I told my family and was like, doing art for My Little Pony. <laughs> and uh, a, lot of, a lot of confusion, a lot of interest, because most everyone I know, to some extent, grew up with My Little Pony. So, you know, everybody had pretty fond memories of the show to one degree or another. Um, the idea that it was largely catching on with males age 18 to 24 was, was a bit of a surprise. But, yeah, I think people understood it, at least from a nostalgia standpoint. You know, all my friends are into either Transformers or G.I. Joe or, or something that oh, resonates still with the that child. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. BotCon every year. JoeCon every year. Big, oh. big stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then like Power Morphicon, there's another one too. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is is a big thing now. I don't think people were too confused nowadays. I think it's a little harder. You know, unfortunately, the fandom has much more of a reputation as a fandom, so it's a little more awkward saying, "Yeah, I like My Little Pony" because mm. it has kind of all that that baggage that comes with <laughs> it from the various drama outbreaks and oh, things. Please. But yeah, I mean, then I say, "Well, no, but you know, I." <laughs> I couch it in, well, I make t-shirts for the show, or, or I do autograph pictures for the voice actors, so I can I can act like I'm all professional about <laughs> it, but, but in reality, I just like the show. <laughs> oh, we all start that way. We all started that yeah. way. So, I think... How we arrived at this point, nobody can tell, but... <laughs> yeah, no, so nobody can tell. It's blurry. I have to say, nobody can predict where we will be, like, two years ago, three years ago... Pixel was just a fan on the BioWare forums and then just watch a few YouTubes. Now she's, what, rolling in dough with We Love Fine T-Shirt Pony Money? Oh, I only wish that were the case. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. They are very nice to me, but wow. No one will get rich making pony T-shirts, sadly. Oh, true. But still, we can dream. We can dream. Yes, we can dream. One day, one day I will be the head of the pony T-shirt empire, maybe. <laughs> Yes. Well, no, but seriously, um, who would have mentioned you doing pony t-shirt, you doing pony art for the VAs? We're talking to the VAs. Ooh. Who would have mentioned that, man? It's crazy because a few years ago, everything is blurred. And especially once you bring ponies into it, it's like, I never thought that I would grow up a 21-year-old kid and suddenly I'm doing stuff for ponies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, you know, I played with ponies. I loved My Little Pony and whatnot. And, uh... I know, and then it just, it was a phase. It was, you're a kid, you play with this, and then you kind of grow up. Never imagined that it would kind of come back around again. And here I'd be, like, actively involved with it when I'm in my 20s. It's it, it's kind of surreal. <laughs> true indeed, true indeed. So and I... that I'd be the minority, gender-wise, in the community <laughs> of my school's I mean, that's, that's insane. Yeah, that is true, that is true. That's true. Um, how many episodes we've done? How many female guests we have? <laughs> yeah, but you know, we're speaking to the gender minority. We are the geographical minority. Oh, well, there boy. you go. Exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. Boy. It's like, why is everybody in the US of A? Oh, true. But anyway, let's move on. And the next topic is housekeeping. And in today's housekeeping, Dan, you got anything? Uh, no, not this week. Yep, same here. Um, I guess everything is clean. Quit, and, and dandy. Yeah. Clean and, well, let's just say no fires have blown out Not yet. yet. <laughs> yet. It's calm before we the still storm. young, yes. Yeah. I think the next few topics we m- might change that. So, in the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, the dolls for Equestria Girls finally arrive. As predicted by our host, that's me, the dolls for EQG has finally come to light and... Oh my. You win. The Russian website Lilu Lil Lilu? Is that how you say it? Lilu? I don't know. Um Lilu, yeah. Let's go with that. That's right. Yeah, let's go with that. Has popped 
up a picture of the dolls. The dolls are just prototypes and do not represent the finished product. The finished product will have new faces, excelled wings and ears and different outfits. Links and pictures can be found in the show notes. So, guys, um, what do you think? <laughs> I'll go with Pixel first because um, she likes Monster High and this is up her alley, I think. I, I love Monster High. It's good know, to Monster start on a positive High. note. Yes, it's yes. great. The pr- here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing about Monster High that I really love so much. You have they, they often get stereotyped as being no different from, say, Bratz dolls or, or these other leggy kind of outer proportion female dolls. But but the thing about them is they're really amazingly well made. Uh, they're they're really nicely made plastic. They, they have really tight joints on them. Every outfit these characters wear is really painstakingly styled to the character and their personality. Um, And they also have this added twist as being a lifelong horror movie fan of not only being a toy for young girls, but also kind of playing with this morbid, referencing R-rated horror movies kind of vibe to them, (laughs) which I think is so cool. It's like having it both ways. When I was a little girl, I would have loved for there to be toys aimed directly at my narrow demographic. Of course, there weren't. But now we have these. True, true. And unfortunately, looking at the equestrian, then even these are prototypes, but they they don't have that. You know, the outfits seem kind of generic. The, the, The characters other than the fact we know who they are and what their personalities are, don't aren't really reflected in anything about them. True. So, I mean, Applejack has a hat. I guess that's... that's funny. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> she has a hat. <laughs> she finally gets a hat. And, oh. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's my big problem with these so far, that they're not interesting, really. They're just dolls. And I, I think... Both if you're trying to compete with Monster High, which obviously Hasbro is, and if you're a fan of ponies already, it, it's just not doing it. So yeah, I guess true. we'll have to see what the final versions are like. Yeah, it's true. Because uh, today on DeviantArt, I noticed an artist, they kind of repainted the Monster High dolls. And wow, mm-hmm. the, the way that this artist repainted the whole thing, it was really interesting and makes me wonder why and how long does it take you, what's the process and stuff, because looking at the dolls with nothing on, I have to say that there has joints there. Let's just say that if you are a model fan, you'll be interested in this because, wow, the details. Absolutely. And, like, right now, one one of the problems I think everyone's noticing with, with toys in general is that Oil prices are up, petroleum is up, plastic is more expensive, and every toy line is cutting corners. True, true. Transformers. If you pick up a Transformer these days, they're really light. There's not a lot of bulk to them, the joints, there's not as many moving joints. Same with G.I. Joe and whatnot. The Monster High dolls don't skip. I don't know how they do it, but you'd think, like, you have this skeleton doll. You'd think, well, okay, she's a, she has skeleton arms and a head, and it's the body is just a generic. You take her clothes off, she's got this fully rendered ribcage skeleton body underneath. It's beautiful attention to detail. It can't be cheap, and it, it shows they really believe in the product they're making. And, uh, yeah, it's they're, they're, I just love them. And, and people are like, oh, Monster High, that's just another stupid, girly, cheap thing. But yeah. as with ponies, there's so much more be- beneath the surface of it. True. But I that's think the I, I think the flash animation for Monster High did not do it justice. No. And I guess that's a, that's a difference between the two. They're kind of reversed. My Little Pony is a cartoon that's really high quality, designed to sell toys that are kind of low quality. Yeah. Monster High has a cartoon made on the cheap designed to sell these collector's item level toys. It's it's kind of backwards. Yeah, I know. Like I said this this morning, <laughs> interestingly enough, I saw a picture of somebody trying to, well, not trying, just upgrading the Monster High dolls to a better color and stuff. I know a few people who mod their Transformers toys to paint it to oh, a yes. nicer color and stuff. Kit bashing, I think. 
Uh, yeah. I don't really remember the term, but I know a few of my friends on Facebook who do it. And yeah, I can understand why you want to do it. And if, even with a friend of ours, um, one of our guests, um, he didn't like yeah. the pink Celestia. Now he made it white. I can understand where they're coming from and stuff. I, this is just prototypes, but I, 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 it just hurts. <laughs> it, it, it does a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would not hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Hey, I noticed something. They have the tattoo on their faces. <laughs> which, yeah, was cut for the cartoon, which was in the original uh, Art. concept art as well. So, you know, it seems like a lot of stuff has changed since inception. But... No, uh, what I said on a previous episode was the concept art when we see the six figures like in the show. That's for the show. And the other one with the stupidly long hair and the tattoo faces, that's for the dolls. You are right. So, oh. we and the weird ponytail thing hanging down in the back. It's just not good. It's not good. The funny thing is, that's the part of the doll that I liked. Really? Yeah, I, I, I disapproved of the skin color, the clothing, and the cutie mark on the face. But I, the only thing I approved of was the ponytail. You mean the it hair? reminds me of in the uh, like eighties in the U.S. when little little boys had the rat tail hanging down. You know the really short <laughs> hair, yeah, the yeah. one little piece of long hair in the back was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've been asking Pixel about this a lot. So, um, Dan, what about you? We, we haven't heard your opinion on it. Well, well basically, I just said ten out of ten would not hug. And I th- I don't know how long you've been waiting for me to say this, but Norman, you were right. <laughs> I hate to be right, but I am right. I know, and it's. I'm looking at this, and I realize that I don't know what they're trying to prove with this. I'm glad only about one thing. If I had to be a, you know, an optimist about this, Twilight doesn't have wings. <laughs> no, she does. She does. <laughs> if you look at it, so the same with Ash. Yes, she does. What? <laughs> it's no, kind of butterfly wings. Butterfly or pixie wings, or yeah, she has like pixie <laughs> wings on her back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna give this some merit because these are prototypes that do not represent the finished product. So I'm going to pretty much, as in same way, same thing with the show because the show I didn't have any faith, zero, zero faith in the show until I saw the trailer, which turned me around almost completely. I don't know how much of this faith I can put into the toys, but I'm just gonna give it that benefit of doubt. Let's just say this. Um... We're not the target audience. Mostly what we're going to buy is the car, the tin set, or even, well, the blind bags. That's that's our deal. This is for little Tina or something like that. that that's her toy. Yeah, yeah and I don't, don't think sorry, even take that mark, though. I, I don't know. It's They're just not nice enough or styled enough or interesting enough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to walk into Toy Story and get freaked out. You know? Oh, God. I mean, Monsters High freaked me out the first time, and then I got used to it, because, I mean, it is spooky in a sense. Well, but these things, oh, they're all above the roof. Well, Monsters High did their job. Monsters High did their job. Yeah, that, that's their job. This is an yeah. Equestria Girl's job. <laughs> Pinkie Pie is supposed to make me smile, not make me freak out. Well, I don't know what to say. Uh, uh, I guess these dolls are not the finished product, so let's hope that they do better. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's uh, all I have to say. I'm not going to let this ruin my current perception of how the show is going to be. You, you know what? I'm just going to say this. Why don't they ask the Japanese to do it? Because some of the Japanese dolls that the Japanese do are really good. So mm-hmm. ask them to do it. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. You know, that's one of the things. When the uh, the show started airing in Japan, I was thinking, well, now maybe we'll some, get some really cool toys and merch, you know, that's Could that's made be. for Japan only, and hopefully yeah. we can import. Yeah, and, and then, like, I really want a card game from them because Bushiroad is the one that's dubbing it, and Bushiroad is a card game company. Oh. So, basically, there's a high possibility but after talking to a friend who has dealing with Hasbro he said that the chances of Bushiro doing a card game for ponies is kind of no since Hasbro owns Wizard of the Coast yes that's true yes point. I can dream I can just dream <laughs> but anyway let's move on to the next news uh, Dan what did you take this one 
Yes, and continuing on from our previous news topic, Lauren Faust had a Q&A session on 4chan slash MLP. After the reveal of the Requestria Girls dolls as seen above earlier, Lauren Faust hopped onto 4chan's MLP to do a small Q&A with fans in that group. All the questions were asked from MLP all the way to the Galaxy Girls. Links can be found in the show notes. So, who here has seen Lauren Faust in her final form? <laughs> oh, Lauren Smash. Yes. No, I, I'm just shocked that she um, she's lurk on Slash MLP on 4chan of all places. It's very surprising. <laughs> I mean, okay, lurking is one thing, but interacting? Oh my. <laughs> okay, perhaps this was the case. I mean, if I created something and I see it go bad, I would want, if, if I see, if I created something and someone else took it and totally ruined it, I would want to rant about it. Maybe that's just me. But, but why not go to the biggest rant site on the internet to do so? Chan. True, true. But now, uh, from what I noticed, she basically rant most of it on Twitter. For, yes. To whoever follow her. Yeah, she tends not to really hold back on Twitter. She, uh, you know, when she's disappointed in something, she generally says it. Usually in a nice way, nice way. But uh, but she's usually not shy about saying when something isn't what she intended. True, true. That's what I love about her. Yeah, but you know, some of the questions that were asked on slash MLP, it was well pretty polite. I, I think. Uh, well, the some of the questions that were filtered by EQD, like one of the questions is how's Craig been doing, and her answer was great, having fun on the new show. Really polite. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I won't associate 4chan with politeness. <laughs> I think she has her charm. True, true. So, who here has been on to um, 4chan? Never. <laughs> I got no idea how that forum format works. I, I've seen, yeah, I've seen the format, and I I posted on Ponychan years ago when I first started, you know, doing MLP stuff. So I guess I'm kind of familiar with it, but. It, it, I don't know. It seems hard to keep up with. You know, st- stuff is changing constantly, and threads living and dying in the span of, of an hour. It's, oh, true, yeah. true. I, I don't spend enough time on the internet, I guess, to keep up with it. I don't uh, look in the right place. I mean, when I started using forums, is when I became a brony, so I didn't know what on earth 4chan was and why oh, people God. are still using HTML now. Uh, it's kind of retro thing, maybe. I, I see the thing is there, but the thing is, I entered the internet at the wrong time, so I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but most of the people here on Slash MLP, they're awesome, because some of the questions they ask to Lauren, one here example is, Lauren, what's your biggest influence on Rarity? And her answer was, Audrey Hepburn. Oh, that makes sense. Hmm. And another one, I, I like how this guy asks, Yo, Lauren Faust, uh, Lunar Eclipse, and the midsection of Hearts Warming Eve in Season 2 really feels like your work, and more like Season 1. That's the other episode in that season, am I right? Also, which episode of Season 2 did you work on the most? Stories, mostly. Her answer was, wow, I can't believe you know this. I work on all the stories, structurally, and only did script work on the first half, Lunar Eclipse, Hearts Warming Eve are two I had a heavier hand in. Also, Lesson Zero. Can't remember which others. Huh. I just like the, yo, Lauren Faust. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, from what I understand, that's how she prefers to be addressed. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> if I see her in person, I'll call her queen. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. Uh, no, no, no comment on that. Uh, I don't know, I mean, like I said, I'm surprised by the questions on 4chan, but, well, um, not everyone on 4chan are jerks. This is something that I find a little crazy, is that the people that I know, some of the best people I know, and the most kind-hearted people I know, actually came from 4chan. <laughs> True. And some of the people I know who are really, really, really terrible came from this other place called Reddit. <laughs> Oh, Reddit. <laughs> I, got, I got no comment on that. I got, I got no comment on that. No, Charlie, I'm not talking about you. I, I got no comment on that. <laughs> no. I actually use Reddit quite a bit, so... But, uh, <laughs> yeah, some of the boards on Reddit are <laughs> cesspools of, of evil. 
No, but, but, no, but seriously. And I guess that's any internet forum. I mean, it's made up of good people, bad people, and the bad people tend to be the loudest and true. most needy for attention. So true, true. they kind of rise to the surface. True, true. But now, Pixel, what do you think about this, like, um, Lauren Faust interacting with um, forums? Because I remember that she might be doing one with Pony Chat next week. Or, yeah. yeah, I saw on her Twitter that uh, that she said she's going to just pop on Pony Chan, I guess, next at some random time. So, you know, I think it's very cool that she's so willing to, to interact with people, uh, you know, her fans, which is neat. I love Lauren Faust. I really do think the world of her and the work she's yes, done. And as you know, kind of feminist, I, I look on her as kind of an idol. Sometimes I don't like... The, the criticism, I, I understand this, this, my little pony was her baby and she's loved my little pony since she was a kid like me. And it's hard to see it, you know, changing and people going in directions she didn't intend it. Sometimes I'm bothered that she doesn't seem to differentiate between they're doing it wrong and Hasbro is insisting they do it this way. I don't know. It just seems like these are people she worked with and, you know, part of her team when she was there it, I don't know I don't always like the idea that she's uh, that she kind of criticizes it while they're still working on it and kind of doing their best to, to keep the show going but yeah but, but she is entitled to her opinion and we none of us would be here right now talking about it if not for her so true yeah. true I kind of understand how she, uh, how she feels because it's kind of uh, this is my show this is my baby and Looking at where it's going, oh no, all of the no's. I can understand, but, well, technically she don't own it. Hasbro owned the property, and yeah, it's sad. And, and it's not even it's not even like, oh, she's not entitled to her opinion. She obviously is, but it's, it's the fact that she is, whether she works on the show or not, she is the face and the personality of My Little Pony. And every fan who's a fan of the show pretty much looks to her for, you know, for how to react to things in, in large part. So when, when she says, oh, I can't believe they did this, I never would have done it that way. It's like, oh, but, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I understand. It's, it's, it's tough. I don't I don't really know. If, I, I can't criticize her. She's freaking Lauren Faust. But. Yeah, I know. She's the goddess who started it all. Yes. Nah, but on the other side, I can understand it's her creation and her creation being ruined. And then, like, Hasbro is is our property and we do what we do with it, like, how we see fit. And then, like, in the middle, we got DHX and DHX is like, oh, but we're being us and, like, uh... Yeah, make no mistake. Hasbro medals. I mean, they, they... Saw this great thing, and they saw it had an audience, and they're trying to tweak it, and they're li- they're kind of beholden to uh, retailers who sell the toys, which are their main you know, their main source of income, and so they're they're kind of issuing orders based on that, and that's not easy. But I I know the people at DHX are trying their best and making the best of what they're told and what, what they have to do. There's really no choice in the matter. Yeah, it's, you're going to do this. You're going to have Alicorn Twilight. You're going to have a new pink princess pony. You have to do it if you want to keep your job and pay your mortgage. So, yeah, that's true. I like how they suddenly make Princess Cadence a screw up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I love Princess Cadence actually. I know she kind of screwed up the whole canon thing. Like, where did this other princess come from? But, but I, I think she's a very likable character. She's very like, she's a very cute, lovable character. But I like how you know she can't take care of her own kingdom. <laughs> no, no, no. She's still young. She's still young. She's still learning. Exactly. Yeah. According to that one comic by, I, CSI Max. Yes, Mad yeah. Max. Oh yes. Yeah, Mad Max. Yeah, she has issues. <laughs> Uh, but, I, but I think we can do this topic to rest and let's move on to the next topic and the next topic is guest time and oh. in today's guest time we have the awesome pony artist Pixel Kitties thank you thank you so Pixel how are you and are you having fun I am having a lot of fun today it's uh 
which which is good because I'm getting ready for a convention and I'm kind of in stress mode trying to get everything ready and time is time is getting away from me very quickly. Ooh, so it's my. it's nice to take a break and just talk and have fun for a while. Okay, Yay, we're glad to be here for that. Yeah. And we're Yay. sorry if we're taking too much time. <laughs> oh, you're fine. You are fine. Okay. So before we start. Mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? I go by the name Pixel Kitties on the internet. My real name is Monica. And I mostly uh, tweet about beer on Twitter. And occasionally I draw ponies too. So When I started, mostly what I did was comics. I did a lot of pony comics. And nowadays I don't have time for as much of that. Um, but I still do a lot of pony art. I do t-shirts for we love fine i do a lot of the the stuff that the voice actors will sign at their tables at conventions so i do a lot of stuff wow. <laughs> more stuff that i honestly have time for but is it your full-time job no no it's oh, it's okay. my second full-time job <laughs> <laughs> it, it's you know there's the nine to five job and then there's the five to one a.m job <laughs> the pony job which never yes. sleeps <laughs> So. But I chose this. You know, make no mistake. No one is forcing me to do this. I'm doing it because I really do love the show and I really do enjoy it. So Okay, that's awesome. That's great. So moving on to the Q&A session of this guest time, I have a question from a fan. And, well, here's the thing. I don't know how he knows you're coming on because it's sent by email three days ago. <laughs> And Nobody's in yeah. on us. Wow, I, yeah, I have not mentioned it. That's kind of weird. But yeah, okay. Me too. But anyway. Uh, time travelers with their questions. So anyway, um, here, here's how, how the email goes. Hello, St. Pinky the Cat, Norman and Pixel Kitties. So was I a cat? Last episode, remember? <laughs> <laughs> this person's been listening. I was just wondering... What program do you use to draw ponies on and what are some specific method you use and do you use any plugins? Your faithful listener, Darkest Knight. P.S. Diamond Tiara is best pony and she is the most reoccurring antagonist on the show. That is true. He's got a very good point. I don't know about the best pony part, but she's on there a lot. So. True, true. Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I use primarily Photoshop CS6 is is my weapon of choice. Uh, I don't use any plugins uh, on my home computer or anything like that. And what I do, despite the fact I'm using up to date software, is incredibly stupidly low tech. I will first sketch out what I want to do. There's the scene, the characters, and I'll do most of these separately. And then I will go in and I will create shapes using Photoshop, using circles and ellipses and things, and I will build the character or the item up from sketch to flash-looking thing. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Now, most people would use Illustrator or, or the pen tool or something smart, but I'm not smart. So I, I took a, an Illustrator class in college didn't like it. I've used Photoshop ever since, so I've, I'm kind of stuck with it now. And uh, and I use it mostly with my work, so Photoshop. And that's talent right there. You use Photoshop to do illustrator's work. Pretty much. And that's not talent. That's stupid. <laughs> <It> <laughs> no, really no. That, that, that's talent. And, that's talent. You know, co-workers and my husband, everyone will tell me, you really should be using Illustrator for this. But it's it's a terrible habit now, and it's worked thus far, so... There it is. It's a trade secret. You know, I still fall back to MS Paint when I need things. <laughs> wow. But now, see, that is that is hardcore. That is expert level. <laughs> that is hard level. So you're telling me that you use shapes to draw your art here? Yes. Uh, you know, draw it, get the line art, and the sketchy, terrible-looking line art, and then use shapes to, like, body. Okay, it's part of a circle. Make this circle to make the trap line. The butt, here's another circle, trap line, so on and so forth, and build it up, which is stupidly time consuming. But I, I really want to see your layers because it's going to be interesting. Million layers, layers as far as the eye can see. Oh, yes. gosh. Wow. <laughs> because I'm looking at the Crystal Throne here, which is a parody of Game of Thrones, and yes. oh, 
who, who, who here doesn't love Game of Thrones? And oh my goodness, like the detail in here, like listening to you explain how you do your works, I I, I am lost for words. Layers, so many layers, yes. That one is oh, just all the playing with different transparencies and then painting in details on the crystals and then Oy. that was a lot of work. <laughs> How many hours? But I love Game talk? of Thrones, so it was kind of a labor of love. I've been wanting to draw some variation on the Iron Throne for so long. So this was that was actually a lot of fun. Were you the one who did the Lyra sitting on the throne? The throne? No. That oh. was, uh, I don't know who that was. I think it was actually a shirt on We Love Fine, but yeah. it was not me. Oh, okay. Because I remember that because, how, how do I want to phrase it? Because I remember that on there when Game of Thrones was just starting and yes. I got no idea what Game of Thrones was. <laughs> Why is she sitting on a spiky throne? That's odd. That's yeah. painful. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the internet, Game of Thrones, go watch it. <laughs> oh, please do. It's so wonderful and you have... Almost three whole seasons to to go through before you come to the inevitable painful cliffhanger we're all going to face in in a couple weeks here. Yeah, true. And if you can't wait, read the book. (laughs) Read the books, because I couldn't wait. That makes the wait even harder, because I know what's coming. (laughs) Okay. So, you work with um, Photoshop CS6, you use no plugins. So... Uh, how did it all start with drawing and stuff? Like, where did the interest came? Were you drawing before you became a brownie? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that drawing is my career, my my degree, which uh, it sounds terrible, but it is in game art and design. So oh. that is that. That is my career. That is my job. And I've been drawing since I was, I was a little kid. I, I started getting coloring books and you get the uh, G.I. Joe or My Little Pony coloring book or whatever and then I would improve in air quotes the (laughs) the pictures in the coloring book it's like well obviously Snake Eyes needs laser beams coming out of his visor (laughs) and that's that's sort of where it started I I I would see something and I'd want to add more to it and pretty soon I was drawing my own stuff and and pretty soon I was in high school and taking every art class I could get my hands on and then college and I've always loved games so when I found out you could actually get a degree in it I signed up and here I am awesome awesome so have, are you working in the gaming industry yeah not in any triple a games or anything like that a small local company uh, mostly doing advertising uh, multimedia kind of stuff uh, flash games or for companies, uh, interactive things at tour parks and things like that. Oh. So you have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's wonderful job. I mean, it's small to mid size. It's not working on Halo, but you know, it's it's doing fun stuff. And unfortunately, I don't draw that much anymore. Most of what I do is pipeline kind of work and administrative and cracking mm-hmm. whips. But <laughs> it's it's still pretty cool. Okay. More okay. Type of ponies. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I mean, looking... You can be at work and you're looking busy on the computer in Photoshop and like, good, good, keep it up. <laughs> Unfortunately, what what it sounds like is, oh, desk job. What it really means is chasing everyone. <laughs> oh. I know the feeling. <laughs> I see, and no, begging I them to finish something because, oh my God, we're talking to the guy from Turkey on Skype tomorrow and he's really mean and he really wants to know the status of your project. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think DHX should hire you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they face all of that and more. So, I mean, then you'll be happy. It's like, I get to chase people for ponies. <laughs> that's the best well, that's job true. on earth. That is very true. <laughs> yeah, I- I'm looking at your gallery here and I noticed that you've worked on the Brony documentary. Yeah, I did their, I did the t-shirt they had, which was the gift for people who donated, which had, oh my God, every, every name of everyone who donated above a certain level in the shape of a pony on the back, which was kind of insane. I I wish I did donate to that level because I I would love this shirt because I'm looking at it and a typography, my goodness, this is going to be insane to do. 
was illustrator. That that was obvious <laughs> director because there's no freaking way. But uh, I also did their title, like their logo thing. So. Oh, and did you? No, obviously you didn't do the animation for the title, but um, no. did you work together with um, John Animation? Uh, no, no. The title animation was was done like the the title where it walks in and the thing pops up was done by by one of my friends on uh, on Skype and Twitter, and whose name escapes me because I'm blanking on stuff right now. But but he did that based on the logo. And uh, then, then the animation company did all the wonderful show accurate animation for for the sequences in the show. Oh, okay. Or in the documentary. Because I'm I'm looking in your gallery here, and wow, you, you do a lot of good arts, and still, it it surprised me because you, you do this via Photoshop, Photos. where where you do it by shape, which. Wow. Well, I and I have some cheats now. Like you, I've drawn hooves in X position so many times that I have a, a, a list of hooves in X position I can recycle. Call from, yeah, bring okay. into there. So that makes it a little faster than it used to be. But everything is different. I mean, every picture is different. Every picture is different poses, and I'm trying to not get stuck in a rut and do the same thing. I'm always trying to do a position or a, a, you know, a perspective that I haven't done before and try and keep things fresh. So it, it helps, but it's not, it's still a lot of work. True indeed. I noticed that you draw humans in some of your drawings. So are there any difference drawing humans and ponies, like any difficulty doing so? The art I do that's not pony is so, it, it's not even the same. It's, when I was in, in college, we had to, part of graduating was developing a portfolio. And my portfolio was filled with dark stuff, monsters, uh, 3D models uh, of demonic creature things, uh, lots of, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever read the the children's children's books scary stories to tell in the dark which were illustrated by this wonderful artist Stephen Gamble but that was the art style I always tried to emulate sort of this charcoal looking uh, rough dark kind of kind of look and uh, ponies is 180 degrees from all that when I started doing ponies it was how do I do happy cartoon cute it's, it doesn't work that's not compute. <laughs> And so the fun thing about, say, putting Handsome Jack in in a pony drawing is actually trying to reinterpret that character in the style of MLP with the colored trap lines and, and you know, the way inanimate objects are done that's slightly different but still works. It's That I find a lot of fun and very challenging, and that's some of the most enjoyable stuff is taking stuff like humans or whatever that doesn't belong in Pony and throwing it into a scene for comedic effect. And also another person that doesn't belong is Raven from Teen Titans. <laughs> yes, for example, correct. That was that was another enjoyable one because I love Teen Titans and Raven was awesome and it was fun throwing her in there. True, true. Because Tara's strong. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> no, but still, um, most of your art here... I, I I could gush all day long and with the oh, knowledge <laughs> with the knowledge of you doing it with um yeah, we're doing it by shapes and I a caramba, I got no idea how you do it. And here's the thing though, I mean I, I'm proud of what I've done. And I'm proud of my art and I it's so much fun. I enjoy it and I love doing it. But this community is the talent in this community, the talent of people who, who draw for ponies every night, like on the Equestria Daily Draw Friend, is filled with artwork I could never dream of making. It's beautiful and lush and painterly and all these interpretations. It's This is a crazy, talented fandom, and, and it, it's <laughs> intimidating. So there's always a sense of, I need to, to be upping my game and trying to, to be better than where I'm at because... There's always people doing it so much better. And there's so many artists who I look at and I just am in awe over. So it's, 
True. Yeah, it's, for, for, it's sometimes for me, intimidating. For me, it's going to be you because I like your work. I like, Thank you. you. You know that shirt with the Ed 209? Oh, what? <laughs> yes. I've, I've been meaning to get that one. I've been meaning to get that one for a long time because it's like two awesome things. It's Derpy and Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I did that so long ago. That was that was probably the second shirt I did for We Love Fine, and it still is like the best seller of, of all my stuff. People still buy that all the time. I, I I want to buy it. I do want to buy it because it's it's so full of awesome. <laughs> like I said, two best things: Robocop and Derpy. Uh, total win. <laughs> I lo- oh god I love RoboCop I could talk for hours on, oh. on RoboCop and Ed Two Hundred Nine so yeah and that's that's how I try try and keep things I there there's a fear that people will perceive what I'm doing as just oh you you're taking something popular and, and putting ponies in it and, and trying to to capitalize on that but. I get so excited about stuff. I'm such a fangirl about everything from Star Trek to RoboCop to, to horror movies to whatever. And it just, I'm always so enthusiastic and I always want to combine these things I love and enjoy because it's fun for me and it keeps what I'm doing fresh because quite honestly, I spent so much time on it. It better stay fun or there's really no reason to do it. I understand, I understand. But also because I just find juxtaposition so entertaining. I love disparate things combined and, and, and not making sense, but also making perfect sense. Like, like Derpy in a 209. <laughs> oh, I, I have so many questions, but uh, I, I'll pass it along to Dan. Dan? So I've seen that you've done a lot of comics as well. So basically, I don't know. What is it that is in your comics or something that stands out from the rest? Because they are really, really happy things. Where do you get all this inspiration from? Like I said, my brain is like this swamp of pop culture. I, I've, you know, I've been all my life. I've been crazy about so many things: movies and toys and games. And I have so much stuff in there. I, you can't wade through it without picking up references to something or other. So pretty much anything I'm excited about at the time, whether it's the movie I just saw or the game I just played or, or talking with friends the other day about some awesome nostalgic thing, that's just sort of where it comes from. It's like, oh, but what if we took Twilight Sparkle and, and then we had Rainbow Dash and they were doing this? That's that's pretty much it. The inspiration comes from a lifetime of, of being a nerd coupled with just whatever random stuff comes across Day to day. So it's like, you know, um, chemistry that just worked? Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, there, there's sometimes when things don't are, are funny to me that aren't as funny to other people, I'm sure. But but still, it's it's always kind of like exercising the uh, these demons of, of geekiness from my brain. It's like, oh my god, I've been so obsessed with, uh, I don't know, James Bond lately because Skyfall is coming out. I love James Bond and I just got to do something, but I draw pony art mostly. So I'll just put ponies and James Bond. And it sometimes works. it works. Sometimes people are on the same page and some people have no idea what I'm doing. So. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. Well, I think you've successfully kind of reached out to so many people that are in so many different niches of the fandom. And yeah, that's, and that's what's fun. It's My Little Pony is really cool because it's attracted people from so many different other walks of geek life, right? People are into it who are into all kinds of other cool stuff. And, you know, generally, even if a reference or a joke or a crossover kind of thing misses 80% of the people, 20% are going to think it's the greatest thing ever. Oh, yes. I'm part of that. Uh, Talking about 20% of the people who get what you do, um, I'm looking at your Valentine picture. and Yes. Where did you get inspiration for this? Uh, which one? I did a couple things for Valentine. It's Is I, it key floating with a bunch of balloons now? No, one? it's Valentine Derpy. Oh, it's Derp. Derpy, yeah. Oh, yeah. the one with the train? Yeah. That is from an episode of The Simpsons. Uh, Ralph Wiggum gives Lisa Simpson 
two Valentines during the show. One is when he's kind of in love with her, which was I Choo Choo Choose You. Uh And then throughout the show, of course, Ralph learns that Lisa doesn't love him back and they should just be friends. And at the end of the episode, he gives her this silly looking Valentine that says, you know, be be my friend or whatever. So I just adapted those for My Little Pony because I've always loved that. And every time Valentine's Day comes along... The only thing I can think of is Ralph Wiggum's damn Valentine's. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I, I seen this one picture from Udon Crew on DeviantArt, and it's an exact replica of that, but with Dark Stalkers characters instead. Yeah. So again, we're kind of pulling from the same field of of nerdy references. I know. It's like, did you use that as a reference? Like, what? That that's pretty obscure when you're referencing other fan art in your fan art. Yeah, it's like now, now you implanted it in my head. You know that whenever I think of Valentine's Day, I think of your Pinkie Pie with a bunch of balloons floating up there behind Rainbow Dash kind of picture. So I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Oh, po- ponies everywhere. I- I'm trying to look for the picture so I can show it to you, but yeah, it's been too long. It's it's not April anymore. <laughs> it's not no February. Uh, I got no idea. Yes, yeah, time flies. Yeah, I don't have a girlfriend, so I got no idea where's the date. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, uh, yeah, so basically another thing is about the kind of stuff that you get for, uh, I don't know what you call them, but what you get uh, VAs and all to autograph, autograph pictures, what do you call them? Yeah, I, I guess autograph pictures, autograph cards is, is usually what they're called. What The stack of pictures a VA has at their table that if, if you don't have a toy or something else to sign, they'll sign one of these and give them to you. Oh. So uh, basically, did they commission you for most of them or did you just come up with them because you love them? They always ask me. I uh, It started with, I'm trying to think, the first one was I think Peter New, who was running kind of a competition on his Facebook page to design his autograph card for whatever convention was coming up. Um, I think that was Everfree Northwest last year. and I think that I was the some, funniest one. <laughs> uh, well, I've done two for him. The first one I did was, was Big Mac carrying a keg of cider away from Sweet Apple Acres, and, and that won, and he was very happy with it. And then uh, later I did another forum with Princess Big Macintosh, which he asked for. <laughs> yeah. That was... I Princess Big Macintosh. I went but after this. <laughs> after that, it just sort of spread. I guess he told Andrea Lipman, who then contacted me and said, I need you to do something for me. And then, you know, she contacted Kathy Westlock, who contacted Victor Tong, who contacted Matt Hill. I've done a dozen or more now. Um, I've done four for Andrea Lipman, three for Peter New. So it's it, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it, it's flattering as all heck, and I feel weird even talking about it. But. Oh, don't forget. So how did the idea for the, you know, Big Mac princess come about? That was uh, that was from the comic I did where uh, I... I <laughs> I have, of course, the, the Princess Celestia toy, right? That when you press her button, she says, uh, you know, I'm a princess. Are you a princess, too? And, uh, and yeah, when, she says that. Yeah, when, uh, when Twilight Princess started to make the rounds, at, at this point, I think it was even just rumor, I thought, well, how would Twilight become a princess? Obviously, she had something to do with this, so I made the little flyer with Princess Celestia on it. And at the conclusion of the comic... Big Mac becomes Princess Big Mac because he took the last last thing. Her wings. But poor Trixie, she she was about poor to become Trixie. an unicorn. <laughs> yes, rage rage twin Trixie. She does not <laughs> not get the wings. Oh. She got the and amulet. It's so funny with with that comic specifically. People would like. I get all these comments saying, "Well, why why does he have a horn now? He just took wings." And I, I think. You're thinking way too hard about this stupid comic I made. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's a male pony getting wings and becoming a princess. I, I didn't think that deeply about the, the mechanics of how the magic worked. Or <laughs> yeah, right. uh, to me, I, I, I see it as a joke because, okay, first thing yes, is... Yeah, it's a throwaway. It's not that deep, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, Princess Ella con Twilight Sparkle you're already enraged with that. Like, you do not want it to happen, but it happens because why not? 
<laughs> and then like the, the the joke here is Big Mac is an alicorn. That's that's a joke. And what? let's face it, he makes a pretty good alicorn. I mean, there there's no doubt. Uh, Big yep. Mac is a great princess. Yep. <laughs> Oh, but I love the vocal comic that Ellie Monty did. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh, it was so amazing. She did an awesome job with it. Uh, I love it. I just, she made that, she took the comic that was okay and made it amazing with her, her awesome interpretation. I know, it's so much awesome. Uh, I could just talk all day long about your art, but uh, I have questions from... The audience, well, who who submitted questions. People but, are stalking us big time. No, this one I mentioned on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but oh, I wish we had stalkers. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> uh, we already have one. True indeed. Not sure. We love you, Darkers. So anyway, um, Bernard, he asks, why are you best human? <laughs> oh, I am, I am not best human. <laughs> I am... I am moderately adequate human on my best days so i'm afraid i'm not but thank you i i just don't think i can live up to that that title in any way so oh, I, I think you're best human because oh, look at the art you do like I, I'm, I'm still mind blown by the detail and quality and knowing how you do stuff oh my <laughs> I, I still think dhx would hire you thing is dhx does the art correctly right <laughs> they do actual flat or you know vector art i i no idea yeah. I mean, when, when their adobe creative cloud license expires they're gonna need someone yes. else huh? oh my gosh we can only have photoshop now what are we gonna do they'll, they'll call in the second string and yeah. maybe then i'll get the call but, but, but honestly uh, honestly here I, i'm gonna say something I, I don't know if it's mean or not but Honestly, I don't want you to work for DHX because if you do work for them, you can't do all the parody works that you're doing now. She can make yeah, it canon. No, but you see, here's the thing. She can't because rules and regulations. Yeah. I can and I can't though because keep in mind, a lot of the stuff I, everything I do for We Love Fine is approved by Hasbro. It has to go through their process. Mm. So sometimes, like somehow... Derpy writing at 209 made it through their approval process. Uh, I think the the way that it works for them is, how who are we sending this to? Teens? Okay. <laughs> let's, let's true. Go. Okay, let's rephrase that. Work for Hasbro. Oh, let's no. Work for the joint. <laughs> <laughs> I already kind of work for them. I don't, I probably won't be taking over anytime soon. Yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> There's a new alicorn in town, did you hear? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So, um, looking at your um, art here, you, you do a lot of um, vi- movie reference, video game reference, and a lot of, well... Yeah, vi- vi- yeah mirror reference. Yeah, Like, video games and movies, like, how... how uh, it's silly of me to ask how did you get inspired, but, yeah... I don't know how how to phrase the question. Is like, I see the alien reference. I see the Katamari Damashi reference. I see the Mass Effect three reference, or oh, is it two? Yeah, but still, uh, wow. Uh, how do well, once again? I, I've I've had an entire lifetime of of geeking out over things. I've never until My Little Pony. I've never taken part in any kind of fandom in in the sense of going to conventions. Uh, you know, Posting incessantly on the internet or, or doing lots of fan art. I But I was a fan of, of a little bit of everything from just enjoying it, from going to the movies, from playing games, from from just liking this stuff and kind of absorbing it like a sponge. And and then when I started doing pony stuff, I, I don't know, it just sometimes something will strike me in the show as reminding me of something else from... Aliens or Mass Effect or Katamari, and I'll run with it. Again, sometimes it works, sometimes it's a disaster, but you know, it's it's always fun to do. Okay, I mean, somebody has to like it. Like, uh, I got no idea what to say. Like, there's a lot of good art. Like, maybe I maybe how I think and you think and what I like and you like are the same. That's why I. Yeah, that's why I'm geeking out like crazy right now. <laughs> I'm hit. We're we're on the same wavelength as far as the geeky stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like I still can't get into that. Uh huh. 
you, you, okay, here's here's one picture that I don't think people would know, like most Asians, like uh, Princess Twilight Mural. Mo, uh, how do you spell it? It's mm. oh, oh, Boa Deeb. Yeah. Yes, from Dune. Yeah, I yes. know. No, not much people know Dune. No, very few people know Dune. <laughs> I. Even I'm the youngest on this show. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Dune is... yet, it's one of those things where most people have no idea what the Quetzal's Hadarak is, but but then somebody will, and that means so much when they're like, "Ah, oh, you you were inside my own brain. You you know, you understand." That's that's always so cool. So I don't know if you're allowed to share with this with us, but how did the whole relationship with We Love Fine start? Oh. That was actually pretty easy. They, uh, they, early on in the fandom, and even up till now, they're still doing it. They run these little contests where they'll have people design art and they'll post it and they'll have everyone vote on it and the winners get to be t shirts, right? And so I did that. Um, it was, I think, their second or third contest. It was, uh, see, towards the, uh, the beginning of season, season two. And I did a T-shirt with um, discorded Fluttershy with a can of water or a bucket of water, and she's saying "your face," and then the collar around the shirt is dripping wet, making it look like she's in front of you and she just dumped water on your head, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and that won. It's like, yay! I won. I, I I came in like second place or something like that, second or third place. And so it got made into a shirt and. About a month later, I told them, I really love having t-shirts made of my stuff. Is there any chance I could do more? And they were just starting up this program called Mighty Fine Artists, where they they have artists from fandoms and, and outside their own internal company doing art on a regular basis and, and getting a percentage. So they let me join that, and I've been churning out stuff ever since, and it you know, just like all their regular stuff, it has to go through Hasbro. Hasbro can say yay or nay, and I've had my share of things that Hasbro hasn't wanted, either because it skews too close to something I'm referencing, or weird reasons. Like, for a while there, Hasbro wasn't okaying anything that referenced cider, <laughs> because oh. even though it was on the show, apple cider is an alcoholic drink. To a lot of people, and I guess the people in legal didn't really know what was in the show, and so it was kind of funny there for a while, but oh, okay. but I think they're past that. I think Cider is okay for, for images now. True, true. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah that was it. Could you share with us stuff that didn't make it? Oh, gosh. Um, or is it in your Divina gallery? <laughs> yeah, most of it's in there. I like to do these parody bottles of soda made to look like beer bottles based on popular ah. beers that I like. And uh, one of them is, there's this beer called Arrogant Bastard, which is my favorite beer, right? And so I did a parody of it called Arrogant Trixie <laughs> because, well, she is. Oh, I saw and, that. <laughs> and I submitted that as a shirt and everyone loved it. Yeah, the people that come to be like, oh, this is great. We, you know, we love this beer too. But of course, it's kind of an alcohol reference, even though it's not, but it is, and so so that got turned down. I, I did the Back to the Future image where, where Trixie is on the DeLorean <laughs> and doesn't have wheels, and she's saying where we are going, we don't need wheels. <laughs> uh, I guess they were afraid that DeLorean was a little too obvious of, of a reference, so that didn't make it. So, oh. you know, nothing major. It, it's just sometimes stuff does, sometimes stuff doesn't. Oh, okay. I, right, I DeLorean, really... it's time to make a horse cart. I really love that one. And he's using the second movie version where they use the trash. Yes. They, oh, yeah, the Mr. Fission. I love the Mr. Fission. That was, like, my favorite part, even though the rest of the movie was kind of terrible. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, the, I'm looking at stuff here and looking at most of your reference, and I, I just love your work. Like, thank I... You, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I could... Just, this episode would just be entitled, The MBS Show, Episode 65. The... Pixel Kitty episode, <laughs> and I'm I'm not a very complicated creature, right? I, I I do this stuff because I because it's stuff I often like and it's fun for me. But it makes me so happy when people like what I'm doing. It, it really does. I I'm not I don't really care about popularity. I don't care about the number of favorites or anything. I just 
I want some people, even if it's like two people, to like it and get something from it and enjoy it. And that makes me the happiest. It's just knowing you enjoy what I'm doing that much. It's, it's, it really makes me feel good. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I could just geek out, but uh, it, it'll be like, uh, he's so unprofessional. <laughs> Right. No, I do the same thing. It's like, you know, Andrea Lipman, when, when she's, <laughs> when she ever, ever she calls me or, or sends me a message or whatever, it's like, oh, will you do this new thing? I'm going to next convention. I'm restraining myself from being a total freaking out fan girl because it's Andrea Lipman. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of tough. I understand. It's like, understand. you got to be all professional. Like, yes, well, why don't we think about it from this point of view? And, Textually, it should, but inside of like, oh my god, it's <laughs> okay. I think I've composed myself. Uh, mm. So I heard that you like to have a nice cold one. I do. I am quite the beer snob. Mm. Well, my my family home brews, and you know, they're all into the craft brewing scene and awesome. and micro brews. So it's in my blood. Literally, it's in my blood. <laughs> my blood alcohol content is like at a constant whatever point three. So oh boy. So <laughs> no, but have any? Uh, have you had any IPAs before? Yes, I love IPAs. Um, I love the Dogfish Head ninety minutes. Oh. Um, there is a black IPA called Old Engine Oil. There's that PA hole. I'm trying to remember what the black IPA I really like is. There's another one. But yeah, IPA is awesome. I wish I could just remember some of the... Um, oh, Black Ops. Black Ops is the black IPA that's really, really good. Sorry. That's, yeah, that's no problem <laughs> because I've been listening to this one show called The Talking Ship Podcast. And usually how their format works is... They do a skit for the intro, and then they talk about beers, like what they've been drinking. Oh, cool. And and then they say, oh, I've been liking this one drink. And oh, they've been talking a lot about IPAs and then, like, some of their um, adventures for drinking. Like, um, have you heard about Edward Forty Hands? I have not. No, that is unknown to me. So, basically, it's a drinking game where you take forties on your hands, both hands, actually, and you're not allowed to take them off or go to the toilet until they're done and finished. Okay. What's your hands? Um, 40s, um, like uh, malt liquor. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, basically you tape, wow. <laughs> tape them to your hands and then uh, watch a bad movie. And each time there's a bad thing happen or something that you take a drink, you take a drink until those 40s are they're gone. <laughs> That, that sounds more like my college days. Like these days, it's more it, it, like with beer. We take it like when my family and I get together, we we sit at the home bar. We, we take it very seriously. It's you know tasting and talking about the notes and the mouthfeel and the lacing and you know we're we're totally into the beer. It's not so much about getting drunk. It's about the experience and trying the different things. So. It's like yeah. uh, have you have you tried pairing foods with um, certain drinks? Yeah, I, I actually have a book somewhere in my, my study here that uh, that I got recently that's all about pairing different types and styles of beer with with different foods. So I haven't really read through it yet, but... but no, I, cool. I, I really need to get into that podcast again. Well, I, I am... I need to check that out. It sounds really good. Yeah, you what should... about uh, mixology? Are you into mixology as well? Not really. Uh, mixed drinks and things, you know, hard liquor don't really appeal to me as much. Okay. You know, sometimes for fun, like socially, but but beer is more of a passion kind of thing. It, it's it's I a hobby. My dad try my dad tries his own homebrew once in a while. We don't know why. We just can't get it right. Maybe it's just because the weather here isn't suitable for it. No, that could be. There's so many factors that go into it, and I I've been wanting to do it myself. But <laughs> I just don't have the time or the patience because, you know, the parents spend days, like, making it. And they grow their own hops, so they have to freeze the hops oh and dry gosh. the hops. And yeah. they do the whole thing. <laughs> it is serious business. <laughs> I know. Uh, we have to buy everything from outside the country because they don't sell any of that stuff here. Oh, man, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we take a visit outside, maybe to Australia, we will buy back tins of the malt and stuff <laughs> yeah. back here. Anyway, uh, I have a, another question from the community, and Nick Amir asks, 
How did your close relation with the staff started? Um, again, it, it sort of started. Well, depends. Like with the VAs, it started with Peter New and kind of word of mouth. And I guess, I guess it really took off at the ill-fated Las Pegasus Unicorn, when uh, which a lot of bad came from that. But I guess they had so many VAs in one place, and they all saw the work that that I did for Andrea. And and a lot of the other VAs for that, and that it, it's they all wanted it at that point. They they're like, I got so many requests just in the past few months following that. I have ten requests sitting on my my pile right now. So that that was a huge thing. But with the show staff, like the folks at DHX and whatever, that's just uh, you you talk to people. You you contact them on Twitter or DeviantArt. I, I started talking to to Sibzy and and became good friends with her and. Then I actually got to hang out and meet her and, and some of the other staff at Everfree Northwest, and they have a couple of my posters actually hanging in in the studio, which is really cool. And they, cool. they sent me pictures of that. So, so it's it's pretty neat. It's it just it's just talking to people and having a shared interest, and and sometimes it comes down to having shared interests that aren't cartoon ponies because. A lot of times, people don't want to talk about cartoon ponies That's because true. they're involved true, with true. it all the time. I, I <laughs> we know. have meetups here, and we talk about everything under the sun. And then, like, why did we come here in the first place? <laughs> oh, ponies! Uh, well, it's it's what brings people together. And then there's other reasons for staying together and hanging out. So true, diversity. true. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I, I'm looking at your blog. You have a blog, right? Uh, I well, I have a Tumblr and then I have a Deviant Art journal. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at the Tumblr blog right now, and I have to say, some of the things I'm looking here is kind of insane. Like um, uh, the <laughs> human centipede picture. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, here's the thing. Like with Equestrian Girl, so many people were having such strong reactions to it so soon afterwards, and you know, I was too, and and everyone kind of didn't know what to make of it, and I decided to take the trailer. And I've been trying to, every day, take a scene from the trailer and do something just completely outlandish with it the, to maybe make, just make it funnier, <laughs> throw, throw some water on the fires or whatever. So, yeah, the the pinky clipboard with the human set of feet is just... <laughs> it's just priceless. Like, ah, I'm thinking, what I the just, The human set of feet is funny because it's a... It's a horrible, awful movie, yeah. right? But but it's it just culturally it kind of sticks with you. It's such a weird, random thing to throw in, into any situation. So yeah, it's like an internet <laughs> reference. If you got no idea what it is, like oh okay. I, I've been really weird <laughs> with those lately. I, I've been weirder than usual with some of the the stuff I've been doing with those. Yeah, and here's another one that I enjoy because uh, it may lead up to another question because. Um, my Little Pony Equestria Girl could two Lunar Necronomicon Twilight Sparkle spikes uh, a dog what the hell. Yeah, I I don't know. Again, I, I'm kind of trying to reserve my, my opinion of Equestria Girls because really it doesn't bother me and it doesn't make me mad, but I just don't know if it interests me. But the one thing that kind of does kind of bother me is Spike as a dog because it's like, <laughs> Spike. You know, he's, he's one of the smartest, most together characters on the show. You know, he's reliable, and, you know, he gets turned into a dog. That that just doesn't seem fair. <laughs> no, okay, I, I, I have explained it before, and, well, somebody might... It may not be a proper answer, but remember in the episode where Spike's babysitting, well, actually pet-sitting all the pets? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I, for, I forgot the episode name, but in that episode, when Spike wanted to get on board the train... The conductor didn't let him, and he's, the conductor said, not without a chauffeur. And okay, Spike's a kid. Obviously, he yeah, needs an yeah. adult. And he gets the CMCs. What the hey? That is a very good point. I hadn't thought of that. And like, okay, <sighs> okay, maybe... That seems vaguely racist, doesn't I, it? I know, I, I know. He just had to sneeze in front of the train conductor and be like, okay, okay, get on, get on. Don't even worry about the ticket, just get on. No, and then he, the, the other thing is, remember when okay the episode where Spike became a huge dragon, yeah. um, Twilight sent him to the vet of all places. True, but first he went to the pediatrician. So yeah, oh. it was pediatrician then vet. So he's a kid. 
And so he goes to the kid doctor, and that doesn't work, so they go to the vet, I guess, because... Yeah, but no, it's like... <laughs> the part that bothered me was the conductor. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, at least they didn't bring him to Zakora. Uh, yeah, that, that would have been the next step, I guess. <laughs> Although they go to Zakora for a lot, so, so maybe yeah. she had the week yeah. off. <laughs> uh, she is the shaman of the show. No, nah, but looking at your, well, weird taste or nerdy reference, do I dare say that you play D and D? I have. I'm not in a, a group or anything right now, but I played in high school. I played in college. Uh, my friends, my grown up ish friends group, we we play, have played in the past. Yeah. Norman, didn't she play D and D right after we got off the show on Brodyville? Yeah, true. Oh um, well, yeah, that was the uh, that was what is that? It's not That's a different table system. Time. It's a role playing game, but yeah, it's get it. Savage World. Mind. It's based on the Savage World engine. Savage Worlds, that's it, yes. I've been trying oh. to get into D&D. Like, it's so much fun. It's fun if you have the right group. Um, it can be terrible if you have the wrong group. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, again, I'm not terribly serious about this stuff. I'm playing it for fun and camaraderie. So I've been in groups where people are seriously into it like Hardcore. doing math and algebra on their stats and find <laughs> out how they can max out such and such thing and I can't do that that's no don't worry we are not those kind of Asians <laughs> <laughs> sadly it's not even Asian what these are overweight white guys who still live with their parents normally <laughs> oh boy no but honestly speaking I, I do really wish that I can play D&D because Hear me going again from another person. Uh, I've been following or uh, watching this one guy called the Spoonie One from the Spoonie Experiment, and he's been telling his D and D stories of how he botch a game or how he DM a game or how he experienced a game. And uh, listening to him tell the story is like, oh god, it's so much fun! I want to join in too. I want to join in the fun. Uh, but yeah, you need to and learn. It's best. It, Dungeons and Dragons is just storytelling with friends. You're you're making up a story as you go along. And if you ever do want to get into it, I'd recommend going for Dungeons and Dragons third edition, the D twenty system. I think it's the easiest to learn, and it's it's the most flexible in terms of either you can be really into it and pay a lot of attention to the rules, or you can be very loose with the rules and what you're doing. And uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's it's a great way to spend an evening with some friends and pretend you're, you know, medieval heroes fighting horrible monsters and such. It's true, true. It's or, good fun. Yeah, or a thief or a bard or whatever class you wanted to play. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but anyway, Dan, you got any more questions? Actually, um, out of the out of um, unique questions, so I'm just gonna go and go into the you know the three classic questions I always ask. Oh, okay. So first one is why Pixel Kitties? Ah, uh, that name yep. was uh, when I was in college, and this was years ago, like six years ago, something like that. We had, one of our assignments was to post our art. You know, our co- we were doing concept art. It was a concept art class at the time. Post our art to an online forum and have people critique it and get feedback on. It. And the one they mainly suggested was using DeviantArt because, you know, that's kind of the go-to for most people. It's just the first thing you think of. <laughs> and um, so went home that night, sat down to make a DeviantArt account and had the darndest time coming up with, with a name. Uh, every name I picked was taken. And I, I have a cat and I love, love my cat <laughs> and I love video games. So I wanted to try and combine those things somehow. And I eventually settled on Pixel Kitties as something that actually wasn't taken. What did you and, find before then? Oh, it was like <sighs> embarrassing stuff like 8-Bit Princess or, or uh, I don't know, Gamer Girl 87 Mega Awesome, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it was, it was probably pretty bad. And it's for the best I didn't get it. But uh, as soon as I made the account, weirdly, I got this message saying something like, you know, the IP address for your area has been permabanned or blah, 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 and you are not permitted. It was – essentially, I wasn't allowed to do anything with the account once I made it because oh. somebody in my building, you know, on campus or whatever did something bad, and now I couldn't do anything with it. So oh. 
years go by and I start to get into ponies and I need, I need a place to put the pony art I'm doing. And I remembered I had this deviant art account and I went back there and magically it's unlocked now. Whatever ban was in place is no longer there. And I went with it. <laughs> and now I'm stuck with the name Pixel Kitty. Uh, I think it works because um, Pixel Kitty, the name, is pretty awesome. Thank you. I, I'm glad it works. Sometimes people will uh, will call me by that name at conventions and things, and I f- I feel a little weird, like, huh, what a name to be to be associated with. But there are worse names, like Mega Gaming Gamer Girl eighty six Mega Awesome. For example. I think Eight Bit Princess sounded cute. Yeah, no, but that was a cute one. But that's almost like too girly, right? That's almost like, <laughs> oh, the Gamer Girl, I'm special. <laughs> Uh, but uh, seriously, I, I'm I'm still looking at your past galleries, and boy, even your earlier stuff is awesome. No, it's not. It's really okay. Not. It's your super like, earlier stuff, like in the pa- the third page, yeah, it's okay. But oh, that's that's. But if you go to page eleven, it's like it's like art hell. That's that's the bad stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, like. I'm looking at awesome like Pixel Kitties and Bronyville. That one is awesome. <laughs> that that one was fun. Yes, uh, Bronyville guys have been so good to me. They've uh, <laughs> I wrote them and I said how much I liked them. And this was early on. This was like when they were into episode twelve and I was barely starting. And and they asked me to be on, and uh, that was probably one of the biggest boosts to my. Kind of to my self esteem that I, I've gotten in this fandom, and it really encouraged me to keep going. Because if these really cool guys liked me, I must be doing something kind of right. Oh, you're doing all the right things. And I also noticed here that you did the buttons for Bronyville. Yeah, yeah, I did that. I think that was last year. I did their, the fist bump uh, buttons? Yes. Yeah, oh, gosh, I have them right here. Yeah. Oh, do you? Cool. Yeah, have fun. I'm still waiting for mine. Cider, Sandy, where's mine? Yeah, they came to me and they said, we want buttons, and we want them to be like Mega Ultimate Fist Bump, <laughs> kind of street fighter so that's, that's what we came up with. Uh, still awesome, awesome. Uh, I, I don't know, it's like so much awesomeness, seriously. Uh, if I were to just say this and that, uh, too much awesome, like <laughs> Ultimate Trixie, the G- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> That was April Fool's Day like last year, I think, or the year before. But this so- year, I tried to spake the screenshot for season four <laughs> for uh, for April Fool's Day. And unfortunately, I guess I'm too identifiable because on Derpy Boru, they, they figured out it was me pretty quickly. So. Oh. Oh. No, but still, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's awesome. I... I, I... I, 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 I'm a lost. Oh God, dang! I'm a lost. I'm a lost at words. Hmm. So, um, I, I think we ran out of topical questions, right? Then. Uh, well, the other two more were oh. basically about your OC. Oh yes. Um, I not too much to say about it. At some point, I realized you know people were at conventions and things where I was getting to be a guest or or going on a podcast. They wanted my OC to put up there with their characters or whatever, and I didn't have one. So I decided to make one, and I know OCs have such a terrible <laughs> reputation as being, well, terrible, but uh, I tried to avoid doing anything too offensive with it, and uh, but at the same time, I wanted her to kind of look like me, so I gave her the pigtails and the the, the cat eye glasses, and, and I, I tried to make a cutie mark that it, it's a little... Pixelated. Eight bit cat pressing yeah. a button on a mouse since most of the work <laughs> I do is with the mouse, so that yeah. And I, I, I used the pony cre- O C creator thing to figure out the colors and try and come up with a color scheme that wasn't going to destroy people's eyes before I actually drew her. So yeah. I, I'm happy with it. I, I have to say John Joseco has drawn her much better than I do. He like he, when he draws her, he gives her like sort of a purplish hair instead of the black hair, and I think it's so much cuter and works so much better. So I've actually been <laughs> changing my OC to reflect the way he draws her. <laughs> but still, but still, it's it's awesome. Like um, I I like the tail part. It's not you don't see that kind of design that much. Yeah. I, I wanted the tail to kind of me- reflect the, the pigtails, since, you know, ponytail, ponytail, <laughs> that kind of thing. Any reason why for the digital pixel 8-bit kitty with the mouse? Uh, well, pixel kitties, I figure a pixel
a lady kitty. And since most of what I do is with the mouse, other than the initial like drawing with the Wacom, um, you know, all the building and the weird stuff I do in Photoshop is done with the mouse. Whoa. Cats like mice. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> so it all kind of comes together in a not so impressive package. But there it is. <laughs> That's cool. It's cool. So, I mean. <laughs> you start with the Wacom and then move on to the mouse. I thought it's the other way around. Oh, no. Well, I, the sketching is done with the Wacom and on the, the Wacom screen. And uh, I feel, and, and this is something I, I got even in uh, in school. I've always been felt like I have more tactile control with a mouse as far as, not for sketching. Obviously, for line art and things, it's easier to just draw like you normally draw. But when you're building things, when you're doing precision stuff, whether that's modeling something in ZBrush or moving around pony shapes in Photoshop, I, I feel like the mouse gives me a little more control and a little more precision. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, that's the total opposite of me because I can't draw for crap using the mouse because... No matter what how what kind of mouse I use, it doesn't feel right. My hand hurts, so I have a basic Wacom before it was called Bamboo. I uh, I have one of the uh, screen things. Uh, I can't Same remember thing? what it's called, but where you draw directly on the screen, and I have a mouse. The mouse I use is the crappy gateway mouse that came packaged in with a computer I bought while I was in college. And I've never found a mouse I like better. It's perfectly conformed to my hand for some reason. So I, if that ever dies, I may have to quit doing art because I, I don't know if I could adapt to another mouse. Oh, I, I'm sure that a Logitech mouse would work. No, 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 no. no. We are going to find that gateway mouse and we're going to ship it to her. <laughs> I, I actually take it to work with me sometimes. Oh, God. The, the one at work is like, oh, this is, I don't like this mouse. Oh, my. In my home life. That's hardcore. Yeah, which reminds me, someone came to my house and walked off with my mouse the other day. Oh, what? That's crappy. <laughs> no, because he was like, I, I use this really, really tiny pocket mouse, and I <laughs> I love tiny things because oh, they're yeah. easy to pack away. And he's like, dude, you need to stop using this. I don't want you to play Team Fortress with me with this. He took it, put it in his pocket, and he forgot to give it back. Good. That, <laughs> no, basically, okay, um, you, you, the mouse that he's describing is kind of, um, just imagine a uh, card shape. Like, even smaller than a credit card. Yeah, it's it's smaller than a credit card kind of mouse, and it's not using one of those um, tube-like cables. It's like a retractable cable. Yeah. Kind of thing? yeah. Oh, I've seen those. Yes. And I've played with it once when he was here at my house, and like I told him that Dan, you're a man. Use a man's mouse. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is this is insulting in so many ways. Are you a man? Or a mouse. I mean, <laughs> I mean man, you should have a mouse. I don't know what I mean. Uh, it's not even that. It's like, this mouse is ridiculous. It's just like, ah, I'm... The future. No, it's not. <laughs> I, I'm glad that he took it away. Yeah, now he can't find it. I paid a lot of money for that. What, 10 bucks? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 10 bucks is a lot of money to me, okay? Uh, By the way, the exchange rate is, uh, um, you know, one US dollar is three ringgit here. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> the, the more I think about it in the, in the terms of American dollars, like, it's just a three dollar mouse. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I should move on to some more questions. Actually, one last thing. All right. Yes. Why unicorn? Uh, I don't know. Unicorn scene, uh, maybe it's just based on rarity, but... I. To me, unicorns sort of say creative arts kind of stuff. You know, the need to have precision and use pencils and pens and things that hooves don't seem terribly equipped for. So, yeah, unicorn yeah. because I need to manipulate objects. <laughs> well, time, time Turner would not agree with you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> he seems to manage just fine without it. So. True, true. <laughs> so I, I think I should move on to, well, the non-pony related questions since we hear do more than ponies. So, what game have you been playing? Um, the game I've been playing most recently was Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Oh, God. Crazy, weird, <laughs> surreal 80s throwback. I know. DLC. Uh, so, I'm about halfway through that. Um, you're playing on the... Retro, sorry, what's that? You're playing on the PC or the 360? No, Xbox. Xbox. Oh. I, I've been a console gamer most of my life. Although... 
Sounds like that's going to change. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have Metro Last Light that hasn't even been opened yet, but Ooh. I really want to play that. So Ooh, those, Metro. and then before that, it was I guess Bioshock Infinite was the last game I played before that. Yeah, I think um, your art reflects what you've been playing. Yeah, usually you could just look at my Deviant Art Gallery or Tumblr, and whatever's current there, video game wise, is probably what I'm playing. Yeah, no, but uh, you're playing um, Blood Dragon, right? And wow, was that an eighties throwback? Yeah, the, the thing that really sold me on it. I mean, I enjoyed Far Cry Three. I thought it was it was a lot of fun, but I wasn't exactly clamoring for more. But when they announced Michael Bain was to be going to voice the hero in it, who was Hicks in Aliens and <laughs> Kyle Reese in The Terminator, it, he's like one of my favorite '80s actors, and so I knew I had to play it just because of that. If they're going to that attention of detail. To be true to the eighties, to get Michael Bain, I knew I had to be on board. Did you notice the first uh, handgun you got? Uh, I remember it. Was it a reference to something I, I might not have picked up? Or yes, it's a reference to RoboCop. Oh my gosh, it totally is! How could I not get that? And You're the right. gun, if I remember, the gun's acronym is um, uh, M something something something. Yeah. And the acronym is actually the name for Murphy. Wow. I I am I have to turn in my RoboCop fan card now, I think. I did not get that at all. I think I was too wrapped up in how crazy everything was. <laughs> no, I, I know, but it's like... Yeah, That's I, brilliant. That is so cool. I know. The, the game is so much fun and crazy and... Ay, ay, ay. It's, it's so much easy. dialogue. <laughs> it's just, if you're a child of the 80s, that is your game, seriously. It is great. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Even the soundtrack. The soundtrack's awesome. In a lot of ways, it's actually a lot more fun than Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 was good, and I enjoyed it, but it kind of had delusions of grandeur that it didn't really need with some of the weird trippy scenes. And Yeah, it's true. But hey. This was more just fun, stupid <laughs> shooter craziness. <laughs> Yeah, I you know. If you want craziness, yeah, this this is the game. Like it, it, the best part is, you don't even need the full game. That's what's great about it. They crammed as much fun into this DLC that you don't even need the disc for yeah. as the game I paid sixty dollars for. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, it's like okay, you want you want fun. What what's fun? What what's fun? Okay, right on a giant dragon that shoot laser beams out of out his eyes. Like that's fun, right? <laughs> Yes, that, yeah, that's fun. Oh, God. Oh, I, I don't know what to say. It's like this game after, well, I haven't played it yet, but after looking at a few Let's Player played it, I, I'm sold. It, it's definitely worth it. It absolutely is, is great for turning off your brain and spending a few hours True. being the manliest, manly <laughs> 80s action hero guy who's ever been turned into a cyborg. Oh, yeah, that's true. I do that with ponies. <laughs> no, but uh, for for me, the greatest 80s action hero is got to be Ref Brown. you got no idea who it is, right? I don't know any of the 80s action heroes. Ref Brown, he plays um, Captain America, the original one. Oh my gosh, wow. Is that the 80s or the 70s? That's that's going back. I don't remember, 70s or 80s, but Ref Brown, he, he's been in a lot of action movies. Like, uh, your Hunter of the Future, something like that. I've heard of your Hunter from the Future. That was like on mid- late night TV a few times, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. And seriously. Definitely my favorite action guy is from the 80s is Dolph Lundgren. Oh! Dolph Lundgren is awesome. The yeah. great thing about him is, like, there's this meme, you know, of, of course, with all the Chuck Norris <laughs> quotes and stuff about how great he is. That sort of stuff is true about Dolph Lundgren, right? He's He's got a PhD in chemistry. He speaks seven languages. <laughs> Burglars broke into his house while he was away, saw a picture of him on the mantle, and left. He, <laughs> he is literally a living legend. And he's a, like a really nice guy on top of it all. So, yes, Dolph Lundgren all the way. Oh, boy. Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> Well, he he is an awesome actor. I wouldn't say that. I would not go that far. His acting might not be the best, but no, I, see. I like him as a persona quite a bit. True, so. true. Talking about movies that we won't say that's good, 
Have you watched um, Tommy Wiseau's The Room? No, I have not. Oh, it's legendary bad. Best kind of bad. Yep, it's the best kind of bad. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it to you, but you should just watch it because it's all kind of bad. But it's bad in an enjoyable kind of way. So it's very dry, kind of weird humor, I guess? Or It's not humor. It, it, basically, it's a serious show about how this guy feels he's not being appreciated, how his friends are betraying him, his girlfriend is betraying him. And it's... <laughs> let's just say he's a bad actor. I may have to check this out. It, it sounds... <laughs> It sounds very bad, but but probably very quote worthy and enjoyable. It is. It is. If you can watch it or rent it, or um, maybe Netflix it. Maybe um, try listening with the riff tracks on, if you can get. Oh, okay, yeah. That will make the whole show bearable. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm weird. Most of the show, I. We all. Oh. Yes, I think we're all various forms of weird. So that's okay. That's what makes us awesome. Exactly. Diversity yeah. of but, weirdness. But my weird right now is this guy is talking crap on his own show. It's a own love fest. Let, let's ignore him. <laughs> hey, this, that's not good. <laughs> no, if you've been sticking with me for this whole while, you're awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, you um, open up Xbox Live after this episode and it'll be clung achievement unlocked. <laughs> Oh, talking about Xbox Live. Um, oh, shoot. I shouldn't have brought it up now, shouldn't have I? Yes. So, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Pixel, uh, yay or nay for the Xbox One? Oh, big nay. <laughs> nay, nay, nay. I, I no. The, the pre-owned game things being locked out, that just, that's the deal breaker for me. I just don't. There are too many people who rely. I used to work in a game store, and, uh, there, there were plenty of customers we had, you know, kids who can't afford stuff, the, the more expensive games and whatnot, who relied on trade-ins and and pre-owned games to get what they wanted to play. And it just seems unnecessary. It, it seems very obvious they're just trying to, to eke out a little more blood from the stone because the pre-owned market is theoretically cutting into their profits. But realistically, I think Pre-owned game sales are game sales that they might not have got anyway. Yeah, that's people true. Who couldn't afford to pay for the full-priced game. So, like me. yeah, it's it just seems cruel and unnecessary. That and the fact that you know this big launch thing, right? <laughs> All true. they focus on is the pretty much the apps you can get for, it. And, and the fact it'll work with a smart TV, which I don't even know anybody who has a smart TV it's right too expensive. now. expensive. So. Well, I was a bit sour on the Xbox One because reason number one I'm sour about it is Microsoft has no Xbox support for Malaysia. So even if I want your console, I can't get it. I I can't get support. If I have a red ring of death, it's like, ah, SOL. That's it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the second thing is, just no, that console, no, it's so big and so... uh. Yeah, the VCR console. Yeah. I like that actually. <laughs> no, but okay. I don't mind the look of it. If everything else was was better, the look wouldn't bother me. But heck, I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon for all it's worth. They've disappointed me so badly. Yeah. I mean, for this console, this is where one place where Norman and I are on the totally opposite ends of the yeah. argument. No, but okay. Here's the thing. Um, I've listened to a lot of podcasts, especially gaming podcasts, and they say that the way Microsoft is doing it now. They're just throwing it out there. That's not gaming related. All the non gaming related stuff is out. Now, E3 is coming soon. We're going to concentrate everything on that. Gaming related on E3. That's what they're going to do. We'll see, but they, you'd think they'd want to drum up a little anticipation. And let's face it, my, Grandma isn't buying a, uh, an Xbox One because she wants to watch her Netflix. You know, it's. It, it, gamers are still predominantly the people buying this, and and I don't know. As a person who games, I just was not impressed. Okay, because well, for me, I, I can't say much because I don't really own a three hundred and sixty. I do own one, but I use it seldomly because if I get red ring, it's going to be a waste. <laughs> That's sort of how I am with my PS3. That's what I use to watch Blu-ray discs and Netflix and online movies and stuff like that. It's my media machine, but the Xbox is what I play most of my games on. 
And I've gone through three of them, so the red ring is definitely a uh, problem. But from what I heard, there's a rumor that after E3, all of the Xbox 360 are going to be at $99. Oh, that would not surprise me. That's usually what they do prior to the, the new release. They drop the prices on the old one to, to get that last little bit of, of money out of the system. That's what Apple did. Yeah, and also, if I remember right, they say that they're going to make, what, um, 10,000 units? Or 100,000 units sold? That's yeah. a estimated time of five years, something like that, before they kill it? Yeah, That's I think about Microsoft. They announced their end of life when they launched things. <laughs> <laughs> no. That is a press range. It is. It's like, well, unfortunately, what you have is now a kind of ticking time bomb to uselessness. So, I mean, everything is a ticking time bomb to uselessness. And actually, yeah. I've grown to appreciate Microsoft doing that because companies like HTC don't do that. And then they pissed me off because when I bought a phone from them, they didn't announce it. They broke a promise. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but another thing with this Xbox thing that I don't think is going to die that soon because there's no backwards compatibility on Xbox One. So, obviously, you're going to keep your old Xbox. Yeah, and I actually get that. I mean, we're working with games and programmers and things to a certain extent. I understand that it's... Backwards compatibility is a hard thing to, to do because it's hard enough getting the system to consistently run your GIST disks properly without installs and things like that. It's even harder when you're trying to get it to do a previous generation or another generation before that. But the, the idea that things like everything you bought on Xbox Live over the past several years is going to go away and you no longer have access to it is pretty awful. I, I paid real money for this litany of, of arcade games and stuff. It oh. kind of stinks to know that money is gone and you're going to stop supporting it and the game will no longer exist, essentially. Oh, that, 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 it sucks. Ouch. But I do remember them saying that you can transfer your Xbox Live account to the new one and stuff. Eh. Okay, if you can't transfer an Xbox Live account, Microsoft is dead. Yeah, that, if you can't, can't transfer your points and things, there's no way... Yeah. I, I mean, don't Xbox Live is available on Windows 8. If it was not available on Xbox, they're shooting themselves <laughs> in the head. <laughs> True that. I, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not an Xbox. I'm not a fanboy. I'm. I'm not a hater. I'm just a person that can't use it. So mm, <laughs> bitter me. No, but honestly speaking, the fans for the Xbox One are going to buy it more or less. I don't know. We'll, we'll actually have to wait and see. I, I don't know. I think a lot of Xbox fans are the ones who are most upset about about the whole thing. Yeah, of course. there's there's a lot of things that they haven't mentioned yet, so we just have to wait and see. Because yeah. with the whole issue of not being able to play old games or play used games and stuff, eh, we we I, I guess we have to wait and see see what they're gonna announce more later on. That's true. I mean, for people like me, the reason why I'm very supportive of the Xbox is because I'm not a gamer. So gaming is only secondary to me, and I think the Xbox One makes a pretty darn good home theater PC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, that's true. Some people, some people have been going that angle, and for I me, I mean, that's for people like me who don't game. That's basically it. I don't know. I don't know. It's like Trixie not trusting wheels. <laughs> Which she, she does not, and neither should you. <laughs> Don't trust the box now. Then what can you trust? The PS4. <laughs> nah, uh, oh, my PS4 fanboy showing. <laughs> okay, I, I think we've gone derail talking about nothing right now. Um, so I, I think we should... Remind me never to bring up the Xbox again. <laughs> yes, that is a sore subject for everyone. Yeah. So I, I think we should move on. Cool. Okay. So, our guests have been Pixel Kitty. Thank you for coming on, Pixel. Thank you so much for having me. So, Pixel, where can they find you? Ah, uh, let's see. I am uh, I'm on DeviantArt. Uh, let's see. That is, I don't even know my own address. It's pixelkitties.deviantart.com. Uh, you can also go to twitter.com backslash pixelkitties. And I also have my own 
Tumblr, which I think is pixelkittiestumblr.com. And finally, I have my own We Love Fine page, which you'll probably just have to go to their Mighty Fine Artist page and then just look for me in the sidebar. Or you can look in the show notes. We have it there as well. Yep, true Oh, that. even better. Yay, thank you. But if you, if you really want the... Um, name for the Mighty Fine Artist thing is com slash artist dash partner slash 10508 dash pixel kitties hashtag oh god that's why I never really give that one out and just tell people to look up because it would be so much easier if it was just like Mighty Fine Artist backslash pixel kitties but they're they're working on it I'm sure uh, yeah. no but seriously um, if you do if you're planning to buy a shirt uh, from We Love Fine do look at pixel kitties work because most of them are awesome. And if you've been enjoying our talk about Robocops and stuff, do buy the Ed 209 Derpy Muffin shirt. That's that's awesome. <laughs> I actually just sold one a minute ago. I got an email saying somebody bought that shirt. So. Yay! Ooh, how does that work? When, when somebody buys something from... Yes, you? every time someone buys something, I get a little email saying, Hey, somebody bought your shirt. It was this one. Oh, awesome. I bet there's a lot of bings when your new shirt came out. Yeah, usually when, when new shirts are released, it's <laughs> it gets noisy for a while. Well, noisy equals cash, so yes, no complaints. Yes, that's always <laughs> No complaints and then there. you come back and you feel like Satisto, thousand hundred <laughs> emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I, I can't imagine what it's like for him. I mean, I have trouble keeping up with mine, and I'm sure it's 20 times what's what he goes through. And he always responds to me. He's very nice. Every time I write him, he writes me back, even though I'm sure he's got better. <laughs> yeah. Same here. But he's always to the queue. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. This, <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout-outs. So my shout-out goes to you, Pixel. Thank you for coming on our lovely show. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate it. You guys have been wonderful. It's been fun talking to you. This has been just a cool little chat. Uh, I hope it's not annoying like how I imagine it in my head right now. No, no. Like I said, it it, it means a lot to me. I, I hope... I hope I continue to to earn that much excitement because I'm I'm always very critical of what I'm doing. Oh. Well, just give us a call. <laughs> no, we should we should give her a call and invite her on more. <laughs> I would honestly I will would be happy to come on any time. Oh yay! Yay! Thanks. Um, and also my other shout out goes to Face Nine because he gave us a shout out to Aviators. Thanks a lot, Face Nine. So, Dan, do you have any shout-outs to give out to? Yes, Darkest Night, thank you very much for your email, and keep them coming. Yay. We need the emails. We need the emails, seriously. We do, and we'll tell you how to send that to us in a bit. And thank you to you, Pixel Kitties. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. This was this was great. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for putting up with me. No, no problem, no problem. I wish we had... Thank you for putting up with us, and me in particular. Oh, not even... Not even. You guys are great. Oh, hey. thank you. You're so you're too, kind. you're too kind. So, Pixel, you have anyone to shout out to? Well, first of all, you guys are <laughs> awesome. You're the best. I'm so happy you're at 65 episodes. That is amazing. That's yeah. Please keep going for 65 more and then 65 more after that. And honestly, I'll come back anytime you feel like talking to me. And I guess I'll also shout out uh, to Bronyville because they're awesome and they invite me on a lot, and uh, my friend Full Papers on Twitter, if he's listening, because he's he's really cool. And if you're not following him, you probably should, because he's super smart about ponies. Yep, we yep. spoke to him about how many episodes ago? Wait, um, that was last year. Yeah, it was last year. It was way long oh. ago, but we spoke to him before. Yeah, and well, was he an intelligent pony to talk yeah. to? Like... Oh, he is so great. I love I love all his thoughts on ponies because they it always sounds so much smarter with the British accent. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. It's like, oh, teeth and crumpet and ponies. <laughs> and I'll be like, so that's what a three point feels like. Okay, I gotta I got I gotta pick it up now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he could be re- reading Snoop Dogg lyrics, and it would just sound like the smartest thing ever. Awesome. I, I don't think he's called Snoop Dogg, right? What was his Snoop name? Lion. Oh, God knows. Oh, no, uh, he changed his name again. He's the new Mac OS 10. <laughs> I, I think he did. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at show.com. And you can reach Daniel here at daniel at show.com. You could also reach our Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And Pixel, I remember you saying you have a Twitter account, and that's at Pixel that's, Kitties, right? Yep, Pixel Kitties, just the name. And it'll be also in the show notes, because <laughs> I'm nice that way. Yep. Yeah, you are nice, thank you. Not to mention the adorable Twitter background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, the, yes, the diner one with Trixie and... Oh. oh no, it's the oh, Lyra plushie. The... Oh, that oh. one, yes. I actually forgot that was up as my background. <laughs> the uh, beard. I, I I kind of forgot mine because I use I use what do I use as my Twitter yeah, I, I use TweetDeck so I don't have a well, I don't see the background that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never really visit my own page, so I don't remember. No, we don't. I mean Norman's one is a default looking one and mine is yes. like, Ripped it off some other website and never looked back. <laughs> oh, now, now that you mention it, now no people are going to look for it. <laughs> oh, go ahead, man. It's branded right there. It says twitterlayouts.com in the background or oh. something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, so... And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page, links will be provided in the show notes. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And I've been Pixel Kitties. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. It was a bright and sunny day in August when she came to town. She had a carriage full of props and tricks and a confidence that knew no bounds. And my heart skipped a beat as love I found. stage and started to perform her show and as she shared her tricks I could feel the love inside of me begin to grow and my heart said don't you dare let her go Trixie
I, I have so many questions, but uh, I, I'll pass it along to Dan. Dan? Dan? Oh, you caught me off guard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good thing you chose editor. Oh, you were Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's basically, I have a few questions. All right, three, two, one.